what's your huh? Then I'm a offer. A million dollars for a show they made they offer. Good evening, everybody. It's Electrical Lessons. I want to thank you for joining me. I really do appreciate it. And uh, let's do a little, this is my jam. I love the song. So anyways, just had to play something good. One of my favorites. All right, so tonight's episode. If you give me just a moment here, I'll get them back on the line. I got uh, uh, Lady of the Shadows, Storm Dancer, and, uh, you know, I have to come up with a good little fucked up nickname for, <laughs> for Bob. His name is Bob. Okay. All right, you can take me off, you can take me off mute. Okay. Okay, so I've got got the recorder going here. I did my little intro. Oh my god, you did not. Oh yes, I fucking did. So, so, oh, just, just real quick, and I, um, I did an episode, well, I did, just got to do an episode, and I got to design the covers for that, but, um, so we have a Leo sun, and we have a Leo moon. We have a Leo sun with a Sagittarian moon, and we have a Sagittarian sun with the Leo moon. So, and both Earth risings. We have a Capricorn rising with a Taurus rising. So we basically have the devil with the bull. Um, <laughs> actually, I can't say that. I can't say devil because Capricorn is more of the, it's the, the mermaid, the goat, and the fish. And then we have, of course, the, the two lions. And we, we all know that the woman's lion is always a lot louder and the bite's a lot more vicious than the male lion because it's the male do. Sends the woman out to go, you know, do all the hunting and all the hard lifting and everything. So... Sorry, I just had to talk a little shit. <laughs> so anyways, I just, I had, I had to put you on the spot. So, hey, how often does an Aquarius get a Leo sun and a Leo moon all together in a, in, in a space? Uh, <laughs> you are a brat. Oh, I'm more than a brat. And I'm going to kick your astral ass. Oh my God, and I would love it too. I'm a little I'm bit into that. What are you talking about? Hey, so you want to explain to Mr. Leo, uh, uh, what, son over there, what's going on? All right, Mr. Le oh, Bob. Bob. I guess, you know, Bob. It's Bob. It's Bob. We'll, we'll go with Bob. So, right. Bob. So, Bob uh, being a Leo son with a Sag moon. Now, one thing that I have picked up on with um, men that have Sagittarian moons, mind you remember, um, Tim has a Sagittarian moon. Um, Sagittarian moon with men, they seem to be a little bit more, a little bit more laid back than women with Sagittarian moon. It seems like sa women with Sagittarian moons are a little bit more fierce. I don't know if it's, um, with that masculine sign being on that moon, but, um, but men with such, especially fire sign men with Sagittarian moons. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting an Aries with a Sag moon and now a Leo with a Sag moon and, oh, and I have met a Sag with a Sag moon and he was pretty cool too. But they seem to be a little bit more, um, I think that they're a little bit more open-minded when it, compared to um, women with Sag moons. And then when you start taking, looking in from like the, from the sun and moon aspect of Leo, because the Leo is ruled by the sun, that's, the, that's fifth house energy. And so a person with the Leo sun, usually, you know, they do like to be, you know, all those fun qualities that come with being a Leo. You know, they do like being center of attention. They do like... You know, they do like being put on the pedestal and being loved up on, but there's definitely a different energy when it comes to men and women Leos. I've, I've noticed that male Leos are a little bit more laid back and not all, you know, like fiercely in your face like a lot of female Leos. Mind you, it seems to be more of the August Leos and female Leos, you know, they're a little bit more, um, they're a little bit more aggressive. And I've noticed that with male Leos, they are a little bit more kind of laid back and, and chill and like they like they know like a lot of them they know they know their strength they know their their confidence they know their courage you know um but with the female leo you know she's gonna assert her fucking dominance real quick you know with a male leo they usually don't they don't usually do that they only do that usually if they have to or if they feel the need to now leo moons now my daughter is a leo sign of leo moon now the difference between with the leo moon though they like to be a little bit they're more homebound to where like a leo sun might you know like to be out and about and kind of um kind of experience the world out under the sun. 
a Leo moon is a little bit more comfortable under the moon. And, you know, the moon, that's um, fourth house energy. And um, Leo moons usually like to, um, they like to be center of attention in their own home, you know. And a lot of times that center of attention is not so much like that, you know, pay attention to me, 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 like that, that immature center of attention. But it's like, it's that center of attention of when I speak, you listen. When I have something to say, you know, like that, that center stage, you know, that presence. And, um, what? I'm just playing. Oh, I didn't hear what you said. He said he, did, he said he didn't do that. He, he didn't do what? He's being a smartass. Oh, I said, well, I don't do that, but I actually do. But do <laughs> and um, one thing, though, too, a lot of times it, it, it's different between July and August Leos as well. Now, um, what are you talking about? And, so, male Leo, okay, so a male Leo and, or even female Leos in the July months, they are, you know, they're still a little bit close to that cancer cusp there. So a lot of times they will take in that cancer energy. And they are, they seem to be a little bit more nurturing and a little bit more um, in tune with those water energies than than a lot of um, August I Leos. Traits. I have traits from cancer and Leo. I've oh, yeah. Well, you're that. zero degrees. You are, zero, you are the perfect blending of both. And so one thing, though, is like Leos that are in the August, if they're in the middle of the month of August, they stay a Leo when you're looking at it from a side real tropical um, chart. And so, so, so with, okay, so, so great, or you are, you are a five degrees Leo moon and, <laughs> and your Leo moon is nicely conjunct to your North node, which is pretty cool. Your North node at 13 degrees and your Leo moon's in the fourth house. Now, Bob, let me see here. I got to. I'm gonna take you guys with me here because I gotta go. I gotta go look at Bob's chart because I don't have it memorized, and of course I only memorize charts that um. I usually I usually memorize charts of those who I am usually um associated with um more tightly, you know. Um, I, but, there's no offense. I'm not offended. Oh, oh no, I probably will get. You, I probably you, hey, if you keep hanging out with my storm, I might have to like memorize it so then that way whenever I'm pulling a chart up in my head, I can look at I can aspects but with you being a capricorn rising that puts cancer in your seventh house and so with cancer in your seventh house means that you do kind of come up you do come across a lot of um motherly type women don't you once you um oh a little bit just how to explain this capricorns capricorns are the daddies and cancers are the mommies but um so your seventh house of other people, your seventh house is also relation. Your seventh house is everybody else in the world. So, you do 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 you agree with that? That you come across a lot of people that are of that cancer and like motherly nurturing type. I actually seek that. Well, yeah, you should. It's your seventh house. We always seek our seventh house. <laughs> now, with you being a Le well, here's the thing though too. Men Leos, they like a woman who can can fulfill that role of a woman, like an actual, and, and not to um, stereotype like men and women gen gender roles, but um, I, am, I am a woman and I do believe that there are certain things that just do co align better with men and women. I think that it's okay if a woman's in her masculinity, but I don't think that women should rip the nuts off of men just to prove a point. And I do believe that it's okay for a woman to be a woman too. And I'm not talking the damsel dumbass bitch in distress, but I'm talking it's okay for a woman to be a woman and to to, to be all those feminine things, you know? And take care of her man. Yes, yes. And spoil him and, and you know, and, and treat him like a I king. Like, I like that as well. Is that what you're getting at? Yes. Yeah, well, Leo, you know, Leo is of, of royalty. That is royalty. That's the king of the jungle. Yes, ma'am. You know, so yes, and I can understand that. And that's, and men Leos, they do like that. They do like having somebody that, that can, that, that's going to be their queen. And a queen acts accordingly, right? She acts proper. She, she acts in the right fucking manner. Yeah, she's, uh, <laughs> she's, uh, uh, a lady on the street and a freak in the sheets. Right. And also too, and holds her composers and, know, and knows how to act like a lady and also knows how to act like a woman and a mother and a partner and, and everything, you know, like, I mean, a king really does look for a queen. And a king doesn't look for a queen who's going to act like a king. No, they want they want somebody that is going to be within with with all those aspects, you know. And I respect Mel Leals for know, that. You know what? I actually I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but I actually look for like uh, 
somebody not necessarily to dominate me at all but so strong sometimes, sometimes i need put in my place you need something strong you know what i mean yes see now cancer women are strong see you're so I like i like to do what i want to do every any time but i also like when, when when it's bad because I don't make the best choices and uh, when it's bad I like somebody to be there to tell me no you're not doing this you know even though it's not telling me what to do you know what I mean I don't know. well yes 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 I know exactly what you mean and you know a lot of that has to do with your Sagittarian moon because Sagittarius is one a partner that is communicative you know because across from them is Gemini so of course they're gonna pull that energy in so so you having a Capricorn ascendant means you do look for a cancer and type of woman who has those qualities that can cook, that can clean, that can work, because that's what cancer women do. They work hard at home and they work hard hard at work. Did you know that Capricorn and Cancer, I call them the money team? <laughs> I do. I call they're the money makers. They're the mom and dad of the zodiac. You know, the Capricorn what, works extra what, hard. What month is Capricorn? Capricorn is the ending of December to beginning of January. And so, and so I can see that your seventh house of cancer, but then with you being a, a Sagittarian moon across from Sagittarius is Gemini. So you want somebody who is dualistic and thinking as a, you want somebody who can versatilely talk about anything and be open-minded and can switch into that masculine and that feminine role. And somebody who does have a strength about their mind and somebody that is communicative, that is going to talk to you and not get too overly emotional about shit when you're talking because it's communication. And then your Leo, your Leo son sits across from Aquarius. So you want somebody who is Aquarian in, in a sense to where they're humanitarian and, and that they do like networking and they do like being able to be a, a service to not only themselves, but others. And that can really, you know, pick up the slack of where Leo is lacking. Am I, am I on point there? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, yeah. I mean, I definitely hate it when there's no communication and I can't stand when I'm trying to tell somebody something, especially about my feelings. And instead of listening, they get upset. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, that shit pisses me the fuck off. Too. I can't fucking stand that. And I'm like, dude, I'm really just sitting here trying to talk to you. I'm really pouring out my feelings here. And you're over here taking two words out of the whole paragraph that I just said and running with it, you know? Oh There's God. I, I, I bitch about that we all the time. About that, do we, Melanie? What? We know nothing about that, do we, Mystic Now? Well, see, see, I like to listen fully. I, I usually get emotional about shit that I feel that I have the need to get emotional about. I have no business getting emotional about somebody else's shit. Let them be emotional. Let them be in their feelings. I don't need to pull their feelings into mine and make them my own. Right. <laughs> so I totally, yes. And see, that's the thing. See that's, that's, see, that's what I love about fire signs is like, one thing about fire signs is they know they they know it, they're, they're very strong and stern in their fire they know what they want and they don't they don't pussyfoot around about it and you are too oh i'm an aquarius but i've i've got a moon in the first house no, so i gotta here's the fire sign i told him you two are you guys are both yeah. you guys are both double fires on an earth you yeah, that's fucking not good is it oh no that's well double fire that burning up the earth with your double fire no it's actually um I love that. It's like taking the t taking the fire of the soul and sticking it into the earth, the body. You know, it's. I like fiery people. I do because I can't stand a fucking weak ass watery motherfucker. Um, I put a hundred percent in everything I do, whether it's bad or good. Right. That's that's um. That's your Capricorn. Well, that's that that's your Capricorn rising. You know, that's your. I call, I call it. I call it being passionate. Yeah, but your passion that comes from that's your Leo and your Sag, and yeah. You know your sun, moon, and rising. Those are the those are, those three archetypes makes up the main core of your personality, and not only your personality, but your looks, and not only your looks, but to the whole dynamics of your soul. So you are a Sag Moon, Leo, Le, Leo Sun at a zero degrees, which means you are a perfect blending of a Cancer and a Leo together. So you are you do have a lot of those qualities of a Cancer, and then and then you're rising as a Capricorn. That's Earth. You are you are hardworking. What? You are hardworking. Capricorns are hard. Capricorns actually. Capricorns work their ass off until they get into the boss position. Then they make everybody else work their ass off. <laughs> yeah, that's, what that's what I'm trying to do. Well, that's what, that's what everybody should do. I mean, that's uh, that should be the goal. You should be your own boss until you can boss up to a level to where you can be other people's bosses. Exactly. That's one no, thing I, I do respect about Capricorns. I've, I've worked since I was twelve years old. Yeah, because you like money. Sagittarius is like money, and Capricorns like money. Cancers like money.
but at, but at the same time, I've been poor my whole life, and it don't bother me. You know what? But what do you consider poor, though? I mean, what 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 do like, you con- like money wise? Like money. I don't mean like family and all that. I'm talking about money wise. Did you did you, did you grow up poor as a child? Yeah. Like how poor? Um, like Malcolm in the Middle poor, or Roseanne poor, or ha- Family Matters poor? Because those right. motherfuckers are poor. So I figured, you know, I've got it for like nine minutes now. Ooh, Roseanne poor. Well, that, see, that, that, that's the right kind of poor. That's the kind of poor that makes you work your ass off. Totally rape all right. those you have Because that's how you were raised. You were raised to work hard. Yeah, I mean, there were times my mom didn't eat because there wasn't enough food. You know I mean? We are recording, by yeah. the way. And, um... You know, and that's and that says a lot about a person's character when they take their childhood experiences and, and, and allows it to strengthen them instead of weaken them. Yeah. Um, and you know what though? Right, um, everybody, this is Electric Lessons, and I oh, have been that's, the that's actually awesome. And, and Roseanne, by the way, is one of my favorites. Yeah, Same exactly. with Malcolm in the Middle. But um, so you do have um, so you do have drive, and you do have passion, and you do have a goal in life. Then. I don't know about a goal, but Ooh, yeah. Right. So, you don't have a goal. You have no goals. You gotta have a goal. And, you know, I go by many. You can't just. I, you can't just. My, just goal, my goal is to just be happy. Sense. I mean, I have names for my alter ego. Uh, so see, now I'm gonna have to talk a little shit about your goal because there's more to life than being happy. Why you're doing it and um. Happy. What's happiness to you then? I still, I still like um, to apply. My, my you know, kids still, uh, you know, growing up and being successful. So, so your goal is to be happy. What would, what else would make you happy besides your children? I don't know. You know, Leo's also linked to children. Fifth house is children because fifth house is also a sexual house. Leo is a sexual sign because what is Leo? Leo is the creativity and the passions and the lust and and that center stage of connecting in and creating our children because we create our children through our passions and our creativity, right? The creativity of being in bed, of course. So, yeah. I, don't, I, don't know. I don't know if this means anything, but I have five kids by five different but, Yeah, you know what? That does not... You know what? That... It does not surprise me that you have five children, and that's kind of neat that you have five with because Leo fifth house, fifth house of the heart. And usually Leos are um, Leos are very passionate about their children, and Leos. Did you know that Leos is one of the zodiac types that makes some of the best parents? <laughs> um, they're actually better parents than than Cancers, to be very honest with you. And you would think Cancer would be a good parent because it's the mom of zodiac. No, Leos. Actually, Leos, Tauruses, and Scorpios make some of the. Scorpio women. I don't know. I can't. I. I, I can't. I can't really go there too much with men because I don't know a lot of Scorpio men, like in relationship to his parenting. But like, they make. They are some of the best parents. And the two top two zodiac signs in a relationship that have that are the perfect zodiac parents is Aquarius and Leo because the Leo will teach a child hey, well, to know, love itself know, and to have heart you know, and have strength and the Aquarius retards, will teach a child to not know, only be so independent on words, and also not to rely on everybody to rely on itself and to also be it able to be there for the collective and to also be a humanitarian now, um, and to know the balance of who they are against everybody else. I always try to make my kids feel good about themselves. Yes, and that's like that's that that's see that's what I love about Leos is they they're they're cubs. You know what does a lion do? It it strengthens their cubs so their cubs can be kings and queens. I wanted to get you. I wanted to get you so we can just have like a little bit of a you know like a little. So you have five children. How many boys? I know that. Two boys and three girls. You know, okay, you've been you've, you've been doing what you know with yourself good. and just so, like as, as the, the rest oldest? of us, you know, like boy, yeah, and boss, and all, a girl, she's stuff. in college. But I wait, you got a kid in college? How old are you? Start having babies head. when you're like ten? Nineteen. <laughs> um, I'm thirty-eight. You've got every season getting oh. ready to um, rock out with its cock out. She's eighteen. And um, I, that's um, so. I just thought you know really why not now. just. 18, 16, 15, 10, and 20 months. Well, let's just hope you don't become a grandpa for another, what, 10 years, right? Yeah, I'm hoping. Yeah, me too. My daughter's a pretty good girl, though, but she's got a 20-year-old, one year old boyfriend that I'm <laughs> worried about. So, I have to ask, how tall are you? I'm 5'9". Oh, you're a little bit on the shorter side. I'm actually average, if you look it up. Well, you know what? Um, I have looked it up, and um, average is... Uh, I would say average is a little bit taller than that. Oh, last time I looked, it said 5'8 was average. What? From what? Yeah. According to what? So a bunch of fucking Italians and midgets and, and some leprechauns? According to the world, I think. <laughs> Oh, according to the world, well, and they say, uh, I think it's everybody in the world, not just the U.S. Oh well, God, that's really fucking short. Yeah, that's really fucking. My, my dad's only five three, so I okay, I love so to talk shit about short people. What? Why'd you ask how tall I was? I always like to ask how tall people are. 
kind of gives me an idea of I love her, so I would have to look down at you and <laughs> Okay, for the, for the adult, non-Hispanic, white male, it's five feet, 9.8 inches. There you go, five, nine. Oh my god, that's tiny. Yes, that's tiny. That's, that's really tiny. How tall are you? I'm 5'10". And so... And you're just here in Amazon. Well, yeah, I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a little bit taller. I've dated chicks taller than me. I love that, a man that doesn't have a height complex. My sister's six foot two and dates short. Her husband's like five five. Now, she wouldn't wear heels, and it wasn't because of my request. She just said that she didn't want, you know what I mean? She didn't want me to feel bad, so she would never wear them. I told her I didn't care, but she didn't wear them anyways. But. See, I, I, was, I would rock them. I, like, I, do, I do wear heels, and I, I don't know. It's, that's, that's don't really cool. Me. I mean, I have some short guy friends that, that, that prefer not to date taller women, but um, and I know a lot of tall women who don't mind dating shorter guys. Me, I do prefer... He's an amazing individual. You to be honest with you, you know, I, the taller, the sexier. Like, I like him um, at least 6'3 really, really to like 6'10, 6'11. Jesus Christ. And I don't, and I do not date yeah, anything so, that is my height or shorter because um, I've dated shorter so guys April, and the last April, one. April, April, um, April, April, I'm, April, I'm, April, nope. April. Oh, you so, know what though? Shorter so guys? Just, no, no. They can be little psychos with the whole Napoleon complex. When a motherfucker is half your size and can fucking work you like a sack of potatoes, I'm good. <laughs> he was also an ultimate fighter and a wrestler, so yeah, no, I don't, I, I don't do anything that, I don't do anything under 180 pounds. Hey, and us little guys, can, us people underestimate us small guys. Yes, they do. My stepdad was a little guy, and he was a firefighter, and he was, had a 28-inch waist. He was a little dude. Yeah, they yeah, underestimate us. I can, I can fight. I can fight. I'm pretty good. Yeah, you know, and, it's, and the little ones are little spider monkeys. Know, you know, they're quick and they're fast, and you know, and, and that 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 leanness of their body is muscle. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, same with same with chicks. Like some of the most bad chicks that I know are are little bite sized things. Yeah. Little little no, spicy little that's, things that's, that's that can feel evil because they're closer you know, to hell. Um, it's, 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 you know nothing about short people. It's hard so, doing what I do for women. And I don't, I don't discriminate against like women. I, I, I date tall, short, that means, skinny. But what's your preference though? Everybody has a preference. My my preference is probably just like just thick. I like girls with meat on their bones. Okay, and what about hair color? What's your favorite hair color? Be honest. Honestly. Say it. Red. See, I knew you were gonna say. What did I tell you? I told you, I see. Oh, I've, I've been running. I've been running that poll for oh well over twenty years. Why did you say that? Because she's been running a poll on me. Whether well, not a poll on you, just a poll in general. I've I've been running a poll on what's your preference on like hair color, and the redheads have it fucking hands down. Redheads hands down. Redheads hands down, and then blondes. I was kind of shocked that some guys that have said brunette. See me personally, I like redheads, but I but I do like blondes when it comes to. I like, so I like brunettes, but um, two of my kids' moms are redheads. Oh, and they're crazy bitches, huh? Yeah, they even say it. Yeah, they're yeah, they're yeah, yeah. You, don't, you don't, you don't, you don't want to piss off a redhead. And you know, but I mean, I, it's, but you know, also, it's it's more. It's not necessarily mostly about the hair. It's the skin color. Right, because some redheads have. Uh, it's, and it also like, depends on the color of the red hair too. I like I like freckles and fair skin. Me too. I also I like imagine. the I like the milky white skin with the dark red hair, like the like the. Sunday Thursday. Yeah, I think like blood, blood red. Like a like like a like it's almost at a distance it would be it would look more brown but it's red like that deep you know, red. Um, actually, you know, but I don't know why. I mean, even the girls, the girls that I date that are blonde, yeah, I still um they're fair and skin and freckles. See and I and see and I dig freckles. Uh, no, to a certain point, like and it just depends because you know, but I, but I do dig freckles. And um, I like and, and I like blondes, but I'm very very picky about blondes. Blondes, it can't be your average looking blonde. It has to be a very exotic blonde. It has to be exotic looking. Yeah. You know, not your not your door next girl blonde. Those not no not your average little fucking no like like a very uh, Anna Nicole is a very um, exotic looking blonde. Um, Charlize Theron is, is very exotic. Um, and uh, who Anna Nicole Smith? Yeah. Oh yeah, she, I, she's. 
fucking oh, love her. Okay, so that and redheads, sense. okay, yes. Laura Prepon, and it broke my heart when she went blonde, but I don't dig the, I, I like the black hair now. And Lindsay Lohan, that broke my heart when she went blonde. And it broke my heart when Nicole Kidman went blonde. Nicole Kidman, that was my bitch for years. Nicole, Nicole had beautiful hair. Oh, she did. And, and you know, she's all tall. Like, okay, Nicole Kidman, like, that body type on a redhead is my favorite. Like, the tall, lean. You know, yeah. real small boobs and yes, you know hips. Yes, the one that you're yeah. she was sexy. Yeah, now she's she going to forehead will rip. <laughs> and Laura Prepon, too. Laura Prepon, she's like she's well, she's you know she's very voluptuous and she's you know she's tall and I and I and I do like cows, you know with women I like taller women. You know what's weird is I like believe it or not I like tomboyish kind of girls. Um, I can I I I get that with um. Oh, that's, that, that, that Sagittarian you and yes. Um, I guess not, not tomboys, though. They all like girls and, uh, that ain't afraid to get dirty and, and stuff. Yeah. Check out so you like someone that can work you. alongside you and, and get down um, into the grease bed. Exactly. So, um, yeah. so, um, okay, so that's... I'm, you know. I'm a mechanic, so... Yeah. And uh, that makes sense. And that's good. You know, that's that's, that's good. Um, you know, a lot of... A lot, of, a lot of men, you know, a lot of them do like the tomboy, Libra, like Libra women. Libra men, women are kind of like that perfect example of a tomboy because they're the types that they hardly wear any makeup and they dress very average, but they're still very sexy. I don't like a lot of makeup at all. See, and I don't either. I mean, I, I love makeup and I can, I mean, I can, I can RuPaul it out myself, but, but naturally I like somebody who is more naturally looking. I think that's why I like redheads because a lot of them can't pull off the makeup because Hopefully, of the skin you know, and, and everything they do look more better natural okay shoe size okay tell what's your shoe so, size let's see here we are five star no uh, oh I'm sorry second, so um it depends on the shoe but a nine okay, okay. I would say average and i'm just gonna go ahead and okay okay so all right, I just had to ask because you know, well, you know, my dad, my dad, like I said, my dad's only five three, but he wears like a size oh, ten, ten and a half. He's got some big feet for for being a little, little. My dad's a redhead too, a little leprechaun guy. Um, all right. Um, so and uh, so in a woman's shoe, you would be a size eleven in women's shoes. Why are you seeing what size shoe I'd wear in women's? No, maybe I might go pick out a little pretty outfit for you. I'm not wearing women's <laughs> shoes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I was, I was kidding there, but no, I was just kind of, just, I just had to ask. Just, oh, and, and the color of your hair. Yeah, my hair, hair, hair is, um, it's really dark brown, almost black. What color is your eyes? They change colors. Are they hazel or are they green? They change from dark, dark, dark chocolate brown to hazel to green to tan. All of them, but mostly uh, brown. Golden. Okay, so you've got. Okay, so you've got. You have um kind of hazily I, okay just kind of I trying to get I have no idea what you look like so I'm just kind of piecing together a mental picture so all right well okay and what's your favorite car what's what is your dream fucking car my dream car yes a 1970 Monte Carlo SS 454 what color blue what's the interior no, color no I'm sorry brown what, what shade of brown though? Like a shit brown or a tan brown? Chocolate, chocolate. Chocolate. And the interior? Um, black. A black interior. Okay, with a cho with a chocolate brown. My dream car is a black '79 Grand Prix. Um, <laughs> white interior with the T-tops, um, with the shift kit. I do want that with the motor, you know, half out the the engine, half out the the hood, and with slickers. That's my dream car. I like a lot of cars though, but that would probably be the one that that's my dream car, yeah. A chocolate a chocolate brown with black interior. Well, I don't know if it's chocolate, but it's an original color that year. They had a dark, dark brown that they put out. It just sounded like a bug chocolate. Okay, that's pretty bad. Okay, all right, all right, Storm, what's your dream car? One that runs. Well, no, seriously, come on now. One that gets me from point to point. Seriously, she does that shit. Beats around the bush. You can't ever get just a straight answer out of her. I know it's fun. And that kills me. I hate it. Oh, I do. I, I, you know, she's, she's, she's just being. I, but she always does that. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but seriously, what's your dream car? You, what? Did I, you? Did I you honestly get, don't. A horse. Uh, okay. Shut I, I up. thought. Let's see, Grant. Oh. I, I don't have a dream car. I'm trying to think. Just like, oh my god. Jeep Grand Cherokee, is it you that used to like Jeep, Jeep Grand Cherokees? I want to 
doing Jeep Cherokee, but that's just because I look good in it. Okay, that, that it was you a Jeep Cherokee. See, in high school, my dream car was a Jeep Grand Cherokee. I almost bought yeah. a Jeep Cherokee. I had a, I had a Jeep in high school, too, though. I had a, um, and, I, and, and, I want, and I want it turquoise blue. All right. So I think Turqu what, color you, what about the interior? Black. Just What's to piss you off. Black interior? See, I'm gonna have a white interior and like nobody's gonna be allowed to ride with me. They're, they're gonna have Man, to walk alongside my the car. Buddy, my buddy and me sold a car last year. It was a, I think it was a 94, 95. It was a Mustang GT Ooh. and it was all red. Do you know what a, must, a saline Mustang is? I've driven a saline Mustang. <laughs> okay, yes. So you know how the body kit is different? Yes. Well, that body kit was on this Mustang GT and it was all red. And it had a white top. It was convertible, and it had white interior. It was oh, beautiful. Like Ernie's Mustang. Um, um, I uh, I oh, see, see the Mustang ceilings. I like the black ones. Oh, those ones are just so sexy. My buddy's got a red one. We put a big motor in. We put a, it's it's a GT. It's supposed to have a five point but we took a, a a motor out of a F one fifty. It's a Triton, a five four Triton. Yeah. And we put it, we put it in his Mustang, and it's stupid fast. Oh, but it's loud too. Oh, no, like, I mean, it's got mufflers and we got all that shit, but yeah, it's loud. I'm talking the engine itself when you turn it on, just that, you know, that initial. Yeah. That, that thing probably it's growls. Not, it's, it's, funny. Probably it's, funny though. it's funny though, because if you hear a regular Mustang, Mustangs are like, have a real nice hollow sound to yeah. them, you know, the 5.0s, but this one, his sounds like a, a truck would do yeah. exhaust coming yeah, down the road. It's, it's got a growl to it. <laughs> Um, I, I had a, a 2005 um, Magnum. Oh, God, 3.1 liter silver. Oh, my baby. I, I might get another Magnum. 2.7? 3.1. 3.1, that's the better motor. Yeah, it, it, did have, it did have a nice motor on it. And I had, oh, I had, the, I had the glass pack brake pads, and oh, it, oh, it was beautiful. There's a car club here in town called the... Magnum Mafia. You know what? I was wondering if there was a Magnum Car Club because every time I would run into somebody else, I had a, you know, we, you know, we had to sit and talk and and oh my god, well, I love I love Magnums. I mean, they're they're, they're hard to um, drive if you're not used to it because they're kind of like a cross between like a hearse and a car truck and it's and a, a truck. Drag. It's a big wagon, like the old oh, school. Oh god, wagons. but those motherfuckers though, like if you know how to handle a fucking car, you have to know how to drive a fucking car to drive a fucking Magnum. Yeah, you'll hit, you'll run the back end into shit. Oh, yeah, mine was a little too. And, but this one I worked on from this car club, the Magnum Oscar, this thing was bad. It has uh, airbags, so you hit these buttons, kind of like flipping switches, like hydraulics. Yeah. Except it ain't hydraulics, it's all airbags, so you can slam it all the way and sit this damn thing on the ground or lift it up however how you want. It's pretty cool. Oh, what color was it? It had a wrap on it. A wrap? So, yeah, you can get, like, car wraps yeah. instead of paint them. Yeah, and, and I've seen the, the ones it was with like It was, like, a dark, deep purple and black. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. See, my Magnum, yeah. I put a black bumper on it, a matted black bumper. It was badass. <laughs> oh. See, I think, see, my next car has to be white. I, ha I just, I just, I've just been desiring a white car, and I could just call it Sugar. My Magnum was Big Pimpin', but... And, and and I would get another Magnum just to piss my boyfriend off because he always called it a piece of shit. But he drives a Mazda, so he's one of those who, you know, those, you know okay, I'm just gonna have to say, it. you know, those dudes like that drives like the the Mazdas and the Subarus, and they have like that 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 mindset. You know, they don't like trucks, and they don't, you know, he's one of them. See, like me, I like trucks. What mindset? That they're better than everybody else. <laughs> that's that's oh. kind of what I'm getting from what you're saying. You just didn't want to say it. Oh. <laughs> Oh, she just, laughed, just, so I'm right. <laughs> I just, I just remember growing. I just growing up. You know, we um, I'm from, I'm originally from Rapid City, South Dakota, in the Black Hills, and we used to cruise Eighth Street, and it was a long strip. You know, that was the thing. You know, we had to turn around, we'd hang out at, and you know, I used to race, and and we just, oh god, I could drive the shit out of a fucking car, but um, it was we had like a lot of people had their little car clubs and everything, and yeah. and then we always had those little douche bags that had like the little. The little foreign little Subarus or Mazdas yeah, or little, you know, yeah, and, and, the and the, yeah, the little Hondas, and they trick them all out and be like, "Dude, you look like a fag." All right. <laughs> Here, let me run you over on my fucking sidekick. But no, I, I, I like tr my dream. My dream truck is well, I wouldn't mind having a dually, but um, I do like the F one fifties. Um, I do like Ford. I'm a Ford girl. I'll say it. I ain't scared. I love Fords. I've every Ford I've ever owned has never let me down. I'm not a Ford guy. Uh, that's okay though, but I, uh, I just I, like I, a PM. I wouldn't mind an, an old fucking uh, Firebird like uh, Smokey and the Bandit. Yeah, those are nice too. Just like, a Firebird. Yeah. So, 
So yes, cars. Uh, we went from talking astrology to talking cars, but that's okay though. So, all right, let me see here. We are, check the thing here. Oh, and, oh good, 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 good. Still going here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and end out this episode and I'm gonna go ahead and do a little pause. chart what am I looking for on your chart you know yes there's a I do a chart, a chart reading where I just I call it a freestyle out where I just look at it and just look at different aspects because you know a lot of us astrologers we know about certain placements and conjunctions but a lot of it you know there's so much with astrology like we don't have it all memorized you know and it takes a lifetime I mean I've been doing astrology for over 20 years and I still go back and find stuff in my chart there's so many different aspects and stuff to break down it's like literally like breaking down um, like a crossword between like um, word find and symbols and excuse me guys oh so there's so much more to it so so um so with the astrology you know and it's it's nice to have an area to go to you know a lot of people you know just go the line and just like you know free ball like okay so what can you tell me about my chart well what do you want to know about your chart you know because it's, it's it's um it's nice to be able to at least you know show people some things because it actually it's really really easy to learn you just gotta know the basics you know start with the basics and and um and then from there i have um of course in my study group 